You are probably wondering why I have a video with a thumbnail, the picture of a BX, and it says royalty on it. And it's good royalty, it's not bad royalty. This is good royalty. So while I'm out on a test drive in this car, which is why I've got the funky seat cover, I thought I would explain why this is such a special BX. I did actually come out to do the tracking, but, well, I've done the tracking, but I wanted to get the steering wheel bed straight. And uh, it's already bang on, I haven't got to do anything to it. Because I'm awesome, quite frankly. So yeah, this is a BX. You've probably figured that much out. If you watch this channel, there's a good chance you're into BXs. Well done you. But this is a particularly special BX. A very special BX, a rare BX. And all BXs are quite rare, aren't they? But this one is rarer than most as I wait for the Audi with the weird headlights. Um, yeah, this is a Mark II BX, as you can see. Nothing abnormal in that. It's a 19 TRS model, which is not a particularly common model, if I'm honest, but again, are there any common ones? TZD Turbo is the most common. So the 19 TRS is quite rare. Why am I going on about this car? Well, there are two reasons why this car is rare. Firstly, this car is a C reg. And in the UK, that means the number plate starts with a C, which basically means it was registered between the 1st of August, 1985 and the 31st of July, 1986. Which is pretty mad because the Mark II BX came out in June, 1986, which means there aren't many Mark II BXs around in that period to go under a C plate. Most of them are D, in fact, you see Mark I BXs still on D plates. But this is a rarer one than that because this is a CBX car. And if you didn't watch my video on, oh my, there's a flood. Right, if you didn't watch my video on RP numbers, you might want to watch that first, but uh, there's, a, there's a flood. Luckily, I have the suspension to deal with this. To deal with such an eventuality, I apply high suspension. So I don't know how deep this water is. We're up. I wanted to do this at Rufford Ford, but I didn't because they've shut it. Oh, that's bumpy. I've actually gone up right to the top. There's a runner there who's gonna think I'm really weird. Now I'm just gonna drop the suspension back down while a completely normal Ford Fiesta is waiting to go through. Well, it was probably a bit overkill, but the thought was there, wasn't it? That's a shame that there was a woman running through because now she's gonna think all Citroen owners are weird. Can't have that. So yeah, watch the RP numbers video to get a little bit of context into what this one's about. The reason you should watch that video to get some context is because this car has an RP number of 3501, whereas BX Mark II production officially started at RP number 3522. And keen studiers of the uh, numerical system will know that 3501 comes before 3522. So what gives? Well, this is a pre-production Mark II. This is a CBX car. That means the number plate has digits at the end reading CBX. And the reason that's important is because this is one of the first Mark IIs into the country. This car was either, well, it's most likely to have been a dealer um, demonstrator. Citroen, when they first brought the BX out in 1983 in the UK, all the cars had a something, something, something RBX. That was the number plate. And it's not a private plate. It's much cooler than that. It's Citroen had the cars registered through the DVLA office in Wales, uh, Haverford West. And that is how they ended up with BX on the number plate. And if you look at 
magazine articles from the era, press cars, that kind of thing. A lot of them were CBX cars. So this is a really rare one. Now, as far as I know, there are three CBX Mark IIs that survive. Um, he says getting taken out by a Peugeot 5008. Oh, that's horrible. Um, of which two are on the road. This is one of them. And this is the car I've had in for some work. Um, the guys who own it have not long owned it. Um, in fact, I first saw this car on Facebook Marketplace a little while back. And uh, it looked like it was in a scrapyard. And I remember messaging the bloke who was selling it saying, that's a really special car. Don't, ever, don't let anyone scrap it. It's really, really rare. It's really important. I didn't know that it was pre-production until I got the RP number off it. Um, because the there is another CBX car on the road, but I don't know what the RB, RP number of that one is. Um, and there is another CBX car which has since cropped up, although it's not in a roadworthy condition as far as I know. But if you know of any CBX cars, let me know. But this car got bought and then um, returned to the road. It had extensive welding done and lots of repair works. Had a lot of money spent on it um, before the guys who got it now bought it and then brought it down to me and said I don't think it's quite right and having looked at it I agreed it wasn't quite right it was quite wrong there was quite a lot wrong with it but I'm now on a first test drive since I've done all the work and I've got to say it is tickety boo it's really good it's lovely do you know I just saw a Berlingo go the other way and it's quite an odd one I don't think it was a multi-space or multi-spass or however you pronounce it but it was a funky shade of blue and the number plate on it was ban and that's another of citroen's uh well their press a lot of their press cars had number plates that ended ban or their demonstrators because they all got registered up at head office which was originally in slough um and then later moved to coventry so this car doesn't have slough or coventry plates because it's got Haverford west plates on it because they're bx that's what they wanted. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a video in the future on the differences between a Mark I and a Mark II, but basically this car is kind of like a weird hybrid of Mark I and II. Uh, I assume, I don't know for sure, but I assume that the car was built on the production line as normal, but perhaps finished by hand when it comes to things like the dashboard, door cards, all the little things that changed, the wings. It may well be that it was hand finished and built in kind of limited numbers. So this is a really, really rare car. It's a rare, really rare piece of BX history. It's got a slightly different gauge cluster to a normal one. That's not because it's pre-production. That's just because it's such an early one. You can tell it's such an early one because the speedo, the uh, it goes up in 20 mile an hour increments, not 10 as they normally do. Uh, the cluster is made by Jaeger, and on most of them, it's made by Veg Veglia, Veglia, Veglia. And there's so many little weird little changes, like the uh, the fuel warning light is a little round light that comes on, which is bizarre. Oh, a Nissan three, a John Boyd Nissan 300 ZX. He's flashing everyone. I wonder if there's a speed camera down there. Hard to tell how fast I'm going with a BX Speedo. They're not actually police. They're like local community people. So yeah, this car is such a, it, it's such a rare BX because it's one of these cars. So if you've got a car that's a BX with a registration number that ends RBX or CBX, you've got a very rare BX, a very important one. Because RBXs are the earliest BXs into the country or earliest versions. And CBX are the earliest Mark IIs into the country. So yeah. There are a number of differences between a Mark 1 and Mark 2, but a lot of this stuff is carried over from the Mark uh, Mark 1. The seats in this are the same as the late 19 GT models, and that's fitting because the 19 TRS, of which this is one, is basically a 19... What on earth are you doing? There's a... Sorry, there's a Land Rover in front of me. It is blowing out clag everywhere, and it's got the same engine as my C6, so that's... That's good, but he was just stopped in the middle of the road with the reverse lights on. 
just then. And there's no way he could have reversed because he was going back down towards the junction. Anyway, oh, it's so wet. So being a 19 TRS, it's a top spec model actually. This was at the time, if you discount the GTI, I don't know if the GTI was out straight away. If I know the GTI, I'm pretty sure the GTI came out when the Mark II came out. Um, if you discount that, this is the top spec sort of normal model. They didn't really do posh BXs in the way that Ford did posh Sierras like the Gear, or Vauxhall did posh Cavaliers like the CD or Mon Mon uh, the uh, Montego. Uh, the random Pla Montego. None of that with a BX. Not very French to do like posh, is it? He says with the CX, C6. But uh, oh, this is driving so nice. But yeah, the um, the TRS is is quite high spec. You got you would have normally remote central locking. It has actually got a fob up here, a receiver for the fob. Um, doesn't have a sunroof, which is a weird one. And it also has the long range fuel tank at the back, which I've only ever seen on injected cars and turbo diesels and things like that. So I'm kind of a bit perplexed as to why it's got that. There's just so many little funny things about this car that I haven't noticed on other BXs. And it might be because I'm not looking, but it might also be because of that potentially hand finished nature. And if it was going to be a press car or a demonstrator or something like that, they'd want it to be absolutely spot on. Which is ironic because this one rattles more than most of the cars I've driven but I find little bits of rubber trim here and there that they don't normally have there's a bit of rubber trim up the side of the fuel tank I don't know why that is there's also a bit of rubber trim just underneath the um, under the bonnet at the top here by the scuttle which looks like it's there to support the, the back of the bonnet with rubber okay Power. I tell you, it does drive well, this car. But 105 horsepower from the 1.9 litre carburetted engine. It's a twin choke carb. So a single carburetor with two chokes in it. On this particular car, it's a Solex. Um, others have Weber, but this car, the carb on it isn't the original one. It's a later Solex. And it actually, to be fair, it works quite well. It's a lovely car. It's not riding quite as smoothly as it should do because the front struts are a little sticky. I'm also not convinced about the uh, health or spec of the spheres. I think they might not be 100% right, but it's not bad. It's got a lovely little zing to it because it's still got the divider in the downpipe. If you've watched any of the Professor Tomato videos, you'll know what that's about. Uh, the early 1900 petrols would have had that as well and many cars have had that removed this one hasn't but it's a lovely thing i'm really pleased with the gear change the gear change when it first came in was really rough because it had the wrong gear oil in it well i assume it did because it had a receipt for ep90 i think it was in the uh service history and it should be 7580 uh, gl4 spec so that's what it has now and it has made a massive difference. Huge, this is quite a nice car to drive now. now if you wanna see this BX, it's probably gonna be on the uh, on a stand somewhere at Festival of the Unexceptional. Um, I won't be there, sadly, but I think this car will. And yeah, you can turn up and, and have a look at it for yourself. Uh, keen BX nerds will delight in some of the little features and quirks, uh, especially compared to other Mark IIs. And of course, there are going to be some parts of the car that are just different because it's an earlier car. But there may be some that aren't. There may be some that are unique because it's a CBX car. But yeah, that's what a CBX car is. It's a press stroke dealer demonstrator that was registered before any other Mark II BXs in the UK were and was built before the Mark II officially came out. They are such nice cars, these, they really are. So there you go, if you want a really rare special BX, you don't buy a 16 valve. If you want a really rare, really special BX, 
this is where you're at finished in a very rare color as well this is known as magnetic blue or if you're french bleu magnetic i don't know if you can hear the rattles at the moment it's i mean you know you wouldn't put a bx down as a solid car anyway but quite rattly <laughs> But then one of my mates who's a motoring journalist said that apparently all the press cars normally are because being hand built they end, actually end up being worse but it also goes to show you how bad the roads are in our country doesn't it in the uk the roads are appalling they're really bad it's embarrassing when you get off the train dover we've just been to france or belgium or whatever what must they think when they come over here and drive on all this that's why hydropneumatic suspension died off. It's not needed anymore because their roads are all so good now. The weird thing about this car is being a 19 TRS, you'd expect it to have things like the rubber rear spoiler on the back and the wheel trims would be the same as a GT. Uh, and it's possible that it's picked up different wheel trims, sure. But you'd expect it to have a sunroof, a big electric sunroof, because the GT did. But no. Maybe it's because they thought this one would give them more headroom to journalists or people who are test driving a demonstrator. Who knows? It's hard to put into words just what a jump up from the Mark 1, the Mark 2 is in terms of like its interior fixtures and fittings. It's, uh, it's got a broken hazard switch this one so you'll have to ignore that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this quick little jaunt out in this BX. Um, it's a bit of a rushed video. I would like to have done something a bit better with it, but I am up against it time-wise, like big time at the moment. And I had to go and test drive it, so these things we'll just have to do. But uh, cheers for checking it out, and I shall see you some other time, probably. <laughs>